Howdy folks, welcome back to Empyreon Academy. Today's topic is hover vessels and so we're going to take a look at how you build them and what kind of things they can be used for. So we'll start with the starter block and you place that wherever and we're going to put up a symmetry axis so you hold the N key and if you want front to back you pick YZ and you also need a block in hand first. So you pick YZ and then you click the block where you want the axis to be. So we're going to basically just lay out a pretty simple hovercraft here just for demonstration purposes. And I need it to be a couple more blocks wide. So we'll do that and that. We'll get some taper going here. There we go. Okay. And so the first thing is you need there's basic components that you need in order to have a functioning hovercraft one of them is the core which we're looking at right here it comes with the starter block and if you don't want it to be located there you can take it out with your multi-tool and move it you can place a new core that is you need to craft another one but we'll put the cockpit here that's the other thing you need obviously to get in and control it and you need a generator and a fuel tank and so you have to put fuel in your fuel tank and your generator powers you with power. Now the other things you need in order to move is you need a thruster pointing in each direction. So we'll put one facing forward up here and we'll put one facing backwards in the back. And now you do not need to, they do not need to be uh, open to the air. You can actually place them inside blocks and I'll show you that right here. So if you place a thruster here, they still work. And so the other thing, one other thing we need, and I'll have to go into God mode here, we're in creative building this, but the other thing you need is your hover engines. And now these act, we'll turn off the symmetry plane so we can see, now these act like wheels. And so what you want to do is, as with you know, a vehicle, you need three wheels in order for it to be self-stable, in order for it to not... <laughs> and it was colliding with the ground, that's why it bounced like that. So, yeah, you need three wheels in order for it to be stable, otherwise it's going to tip over. So, what you can do here is you get in and you hit Y to turn it on, you hit V to go to your external view, you hit Alt, and that gives you free look, and you can scroll in and out and set where you want your... how far you want your distance to be. So, yeah, that's your basic, and there's one other thing that you need, and that is an RCS, because, yeah, I can't turn this thing. So, <laughs> let me grab an RCS and throw that on, too. So, let's get out, and we'll grab an RCS, wherever it is, there it is, and we'll put that on, there. And now that we have an RCS, we can actually turn our hovercraft. So you just control these with the regular keys, WASD for back, forth, left, right. And you want to use the space bar to raise your hover height. If you look over here, it shows you your hover height. It can be anywhere from zero up to three meters. So if you hold down the shift key, it'll go all the way down. And if you hold down the space bar, it'll go up and it can go up to three meters. And so now you can fly this thing around. And that is the basic hovercraft. So there are a few advanced things that you can do with them, and we'll go through all the components that you can add. So let's start with, let's see here, the booster engines, and I already have some. And so this, currently, the way this is set up, this only works on smaller, smaller hovercrafts because they only put out, as you see over on the right, they only put out 25 kilonewtons, which is not very much at all. So... Yeah, you can boost with smaller hovercrafts, but they're <laughs> the larger ones, it's not going to work. So in order to boost, you hold shift and space at the same time. And your booster bar over here has to be full in order for you to do that. So we'll wait for it to fill up. There we go. And so you hold shift and press space and you boost up in the air. And like I said, this, this only works fairly well with smaller hovercrafts because larger hovercrafts are 
too heavy for those. You basically have to add so many of them on that your thrusters don't work anymore, etc., etc. So we're actually going to take those off because they're too heavy. <laughs> because if you see here, let's look at, we'll hit P and go into the control panel. And what you see here is um, the mass is 7.76 tons. And I'm not sure what that blueprint was. The mass is 7.76 tons. And half of that is those booster engines. You know, these are one ton or half a ton. But yeah, it's like, it's quite ridiculous how much those are. So we'll take those off. Now, if you're in creative mode, you can remove blocks by having a block in your hand. Shift right click or run right click if you're run key is not shift like mine <laughs> and so when we get back in here you look and yeah it was a ton and a half it was a significant amount almost a quarter of the ship's mass next we'll look at some of the add-ons you can put onto a hovercraft so the first is oxygen and you can add an oxygen tank which you put your oxygen supply into over here and you can shift click to add all of them at once and then you have an oxygen dispenser, which you can then hit F or T, whichever your key is, in order to fill up your oxygen. And next is the constructor, and this is a small constructor, and it allows you to use, it allows you to construct craft stuff on the fly, just like any other one. It doesn't have as many recipes as the large constructor but it will allow you to get a lot of the parts that you need in the field and to process your ores that you've gathered while you're out mining and stuff. Next is a fridge, which allows you to keep your perishables from perishing. So that's handy. There's the fridge. And other things you can add are lights, which is especially handy if you're using this for a mining vehicle and you put a light on the bottom. That's really cool. So when you're when you're mining, if you're sitting this near or over the mining hole, you can actually use that as a light source. Now, if you want to adjust this light, you point at it, press P, and it's not working on the hovercraft because I'm not on the hovercraft. But if you press P and you go into here, you can adjust the intensity and range of the light so that it's helpful for whatever you need while you're mining. The other light source that you can add is the spotlight which is a directional light source as you see here and we'll make it nighttime so that you can see what kind of effect it has there we go and so there is the effect of the light source hovercrafts can also carry weapons and so you have the mounted the fixed weapons here which are the gatling guns and you also have the turrets, which include miniguns and several others, plasma and rockets, as well as the artillery turret, which is quite huge. So <laughs> we'll put that on top just to show you what it looks like. And if you go into your ship and you press P to enter the control panel, you can set what these turrets will fire at. And so we're going to turn off all of these turrets for right now just so that they don't shoot at stuff as soon as we give them ammo and the other thing you need to do is you need to put on an ammo box in order to hold your ammo for your weapons so you need an ammo box anywhere on the ship it doesn't have to be connected to them or anything like that and you open it up and put in your ammo so you need the ammo if you if you look at the turret itself it will show you which type of ammo it needs here and here and artil artillery shells so each weapon takes its own ammo and when you're in the cockpit you can do your gatling guns you can set those and you want to hit your reload key and then you can fire them with the trigger as long as they are selected now notice that if you scroll up and down you're gonna move off of that and so that actually happens quite a bit and for some reason they've chosen to make it so that when you enter the cockpit you notice that your selection is on nothing instead of your main weapons i'm not sure why they do that but it's that way currently and so you do need to watch out for that now to fire your turrets what you want to do is you want to be in the cockpit and you press p and you select your turrets 
So minigun turret and select access and you can get in. And you might need to reload if you haven't reloaded yet and then you can just fire with the trigger. And shoot stuff. <laughs> Take that, raptors. Now another thing you can do in the control panel is this little statistics screen. And this will show you various aspects of your ship. So you have two meters per second in each direction, which is like really, really bad. So you might want to, when you're building your ship, you might want to add more engines. And we'll grab some here quickly. And what you want to notice, what you'll notice here is that the small thrusters, the directional thrusters, have a much better output per mass and per unit of energy used. So at this point in time, and it may change later, and I'll add an annot annotation if that's necessary, but at this point in time, I recommend do not use the large thrusters, medium thrusters, whatever they're called. I recommend only using the directional thrusters. That may change as they do other things, as they adjust things, but for right now, yeah, just stick with the directionals. So I'm gonna add a couple more on here and we'll get this ship to move a little bit better. Okay, we have now added extra thrusters. So if we go into the control panel, I've added extra thrusters on each direction, more of them on the front and back. And so we're now up to seven and three on the side because with a hovercraft, with the way the, the thrusters are currently working, you're going to want to add most of your thrusters pointing forward and not backwards. And if you need to be able to climb hills, you do want to actually get your thrust up to over the amount that gravity is, which at 0.84 is gonna be about eight or more meters per second. And so this thing is, if at all, barely gonna be able to climb hills. So you do need to watch your thrust numbers in, or, in order to be able to climb hills and make sure that your, your hovercraft is gonna work the way you want it to work. Another thing you can add is the harvester module and this allows you to harvest wood which is really handy so you go up and you use this like a weapon and you go up to a tree with it and you press the fire button and it will chop down the tree there you go and when you get out if you look here you can actually look in your control panel and it has an inventory and so it will pick up the wood logs for whatever wood you have gathered with it It's also useful for killing animals and enemies, as you can see. <laughs> Revenge on the raptors. Another tool in the building tools, which you open with the N key, is showing the center of mass. Now the yellow is the center of mass, and the blue is the geometric center, or basically the center of the bounding box. So if you add a bunch of blocks out here, for example, the blue will move over and if you and the yellow I think moved over just a slight bit yes and if you remove all of these as you see here the blue does not change so this is just this is just showing the center of the bounding box that encapsulates the entire ship and so this doesn't actually change the balance of anything that much unless you move the center of mass. Now what you can also do to adjust the center of mass is you can use this mass block here and you can put it and watch if you, we watch as we put it on here the center of mass actually moves as we put this on and so we can see it's moving off to the side and over to the back etc etc and the farther out you put your extra mass blocks the more leverage it's going to have and there you go and so that's what the artificial mass blocks are good for and I should probably take these off before the ship goes nuts <laughs> sometimes you'll have uh, some problems piloting and your hovercraft will end up upside down and when that happens what you want to do is you just hold down the shift key and it should auto try to write itself and there we go and now my view is not righted itself <laughs> and there you go so that's how you write your ship if you end up upside down 
Hovercrafts have quite a few uses, and one of them is they can keep you safe from predators, which is quite handy. And so one of the things you can use them is as a hunting platform. And these guys will come after me, but cannot actually hit me on top of the hovercraft. One of the other functions of a hovercraft is a mobile oxygen dispenser, and you actually want to watch your oxygen. You do want to put an oxygen tank on pretty much any hovercraft, because while you're in the cockpit, you are using oxygen. And so when you have an oxygen tank on the ship, it will actually show you how much oxygen is in it here, and you'll use your oxygen from there instead of from your suit. Now, it won't actually refill your suit actively. You do need the oxygen station in order to do that. But even on a planet that has a breathable atmosphere, you will use oxygen while in a cockpit. So again, make sure you put an oxygen tank on because you'll need it. One of the other uses of a hovercraft is to defend you against drones using the auto turrets while you're mining. So while you're down digging a hole, it will take care of any drones that are incoming by itself and you don't have to worry about getting shot up while you're mining. One of the other quite handy uses for the hovercraft is with the artillery turret you can actually if you have the right circumstances you can get close enough to a POI without it being able to shoot you and you can go into the turrets and we will go into the artillery turret and as you see here we can shoot out the <laughs> we can shoot out the POI turrets and re destroy those without actually having to be shot back by the POI. And so you do need to find the right location and the right obstacles and you can even use the fill and flatten tool in order to get that to work. <laughs> and apparently the artillery shell is bigger than it looks. And as you can see, the turrets have been shot out and are no more. This one is still there, so you'd have to get another angle on that one. But you get the idea, and so you can use it for that. Another way you can get your artillery turret into view is to put a long spire on your hovercraft. And then you can put the artillery turret on top of this because the game does not, the AI does not see this as the whole bounding box it doesn't try to shoot at the whole bounding box it only tries to shoot at i believe it's the core and so when you do this as you can see you have a nice line of fire but the thing does not shoot back and so you can use that too one final tip for hvs is the standalone turret and as you see here this just has the minimal parts the core the fuel tank and the generator and an ammo box and then you can just put turrets on it you don't need hover engines or any of those accessories in order to make it work you might need to put a passenger seat or a cockpit on it in order to if you want it to set it to other than the defaults which it fires at predators so you may want to put one on and then remove it later but yeah you can use this as a standalone turret and it will just shoot at whatever you tell it to shoot at and it won't move all right, guys, that is all the HV hints and tips we have for today. I hope that you found it useful and that you'll be able to build your own HVs and be able to use them in fun ways in your own game. Join us in the next lesson, and we will cover the construction and use of small vessels. And until then, enjoy your hovercrafts.